Welcome to this class on the topic of break-even analysis. Um, in this class we're going to look at the importance of break-even analysis and the way in which it's constructed, the way it may be looked at. Um, once a business has established its costs and estimated its selling price, it's in a position to be able to calculate the exact number of units to produce. Now, this means that it must know what the selling price will be and it must know its costs and it must be able to break its costs into fixed and variable costs. Once it's done that it's in a position to work out its break-even. Ideally the organization will plan to sell in excess of the volume that is is calculated for break-even. Uh, presumably businesses are not uh, setting the target of breaking even. Presumably businesses set the target of generating profits which is in excess of break even. There are two ways of calculating the break even. One is mathematical and the other is graphical. Uh, we can have briefly a look at, at both of these but essentially we will rely on the, the graphical technique. So what we need here is we need the sales price, we need fixed costs and we need to know what the variable costs are. Now there are problems about what's fixed and what's variable and we'll have a look at these. One of the big accounting institutes, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, <clears throat> have uh, the following uh, definitions. Fixed costs are a cost which which a fixed cost is a cost which is incurred for an accounting period and which within that certain output and turnover limits tends to be unaffected by fluctuations in the level of activity. Putting it simply, it's fixed. It's a fixed cost. It doesn't vary as the output varies. So that's the first type. The second type are variable costs. Now these are in direct proportion to the volume of output. These may include raw materials or labour that's incorporated in the product. The more you produce, the more workers you need. The more you produce, the more raw materials you require. So they are variable costs. And there's also one which is very popular in economics, but used in accountancy as well, called marginal costing. Uh, the accounting system in which uh, variable costs are charged to unit costs and fixed costs uh, of the period are written off uh, in full against the aggregate contribution. So with marginal costing you work out what the raw materials, the labour, the energy, all of the, the bills that go to make the product. Um, you work out what the selling price is and you try to sell as many as possible and at the end of the period you pay off your fixed costs and calculate your profit. So although the, the three of these sound somewhat complex they're actually straightforward. Fixed costs are fixed, variable costs are, you, you guessed it, they're variable and marginal costs just means working out the costs of the, the product to make it looking at the selling price and ensuring that the selling price is more than the cost of course, uh, selling as many as possible and at the end of the period paying off the fixed costs and the residual is uh, profit. In theory it's, it's a very simple to use technique. Um, in practice there are problems but it is, it is fairly straightforward. Um, the assumptions that are made often cause the problems. Let's have a look at these briefly. Um, it's difficult to break all costs into either fixed or variable costs. That's um, it's it's almost an arbitrary definition, an arbitrary uh, issue, but it is difficult. Some items are fixed, some costs are fixed for a certain period and then 
they just change. For example, the cost of electricity, it's fixed for a certain period, or the, the fixed proportion of the bill is fixed for a certain period, and then the electric company increases the charge. So it's a fixed increase. You, to have the electric supply, you have to pay more. Um, fixed costs are not don't remain constant throughout a period either. Uh, fixed costs can vary. For for example, uh, you might need a new machine. Well, that's the machine once you've got it is fixed. You use it over the period, but to get a new machine, that's not fixed. It's suddenly a jump in the in the costs. Um, and the fixed costs don't really bear any relationship to the units produced or the services provided. They're, they're fixed costs. They're, they're there because they're necessary but they don't really relate to the product. The, the premises do not relate to the product in, in any one-to-one -one fashion. Variable costs uh, may not in fact vary directly with the output as well. Variable costs, uh, some workers for example, may be required whether you produce a little or a large amount. These may be technical people who do the design for the product for example. So that's not... Uh, variable costs are, are not necessarily variable in all senses of the word. Um, and the variable cost, of course, may depend on the level of the output. The more that's produced, the greater the variable cost. Uh, some costs are semi-variable. They contain elements of both fixed and variable. For example, a telephone bill. Uh, you've got to pay for the telephone line. That's fixed. But then the more you use the phone, that's variable. The same for electricity. You have to pay for the provision of the electricity to the building. That's fixed. But then the more you use it, that's variable. Um, let's look ahead graphically. I think it'll get a bit clearer. So there's a fixed uh, cost. I'll put the cursor on the screen. There you go. That is fixed. It's it, as, as the volume of output increases along here, the fixed costs remain the same. Variable costs, well, the more you produce, the more costly it is. So you have the fixed cost to pay, but now you've got the variable on top of this. So you've got to pay for the raw materials, the labour, all of the items involved in producing and selling the, the good. And of course you've got the sales. Uh, if you don't sell anything, there's no sales revenue. If you sell a lot, there'll be a lot of sales revenue. So the gradient of that line is actually the price. But um, that's what the that curve looks like. Um, if we go back to the previous one for a second, if we take this one here and just expand it, we will get this one here. Right, this is our break-even chart and this is the one you'll see in most textbooks. So we have our fixed costs which are there, are fixed, irrespective of the volume of output the costs are the same. We have our variable costs at this volume of output that's the variable cost. If we had less output the variable cost would be less, be less raw materials used, less energy, less less machine time and so on. And, of course, the difference between the fixed and variable cost and the sales revenue is the profit. So, that is the profit. And, at this point over here, there is no profit. There's no loss or no profit. It's the break-even point. So, this level of output is absolutely essential. The, the business must produce this much. If it doesn't, it will incur losses. If it produces more, the more it produces, the more profit it will make. Um, so we have fixed costs plus variable costs equals revenue. 
fixed cost plus variable cost equals price times quantity. That's the sales revenue. That's um, an overview of break-even analysis. That's the essential chart that you need. That's the essential graph and you need to know how to be able to reproduce that. The distinction between fixed and variable costs is important. You should realize that even though something is said to be fixed down the line it could it could be variable. For example, machine machinery are fixed, the fixed cost, but you might need a new machinery at some stage, a new piece of machinery. So the the line, if this was our fixed uh, cost for machinery, down here with a new machine, it'll get, jump upwards. So the, the line will go up and across. So what's fixed? Hmm. Maybe there may be an element of variability in it. And likewise with the variable costs, you have some items which are semi-fixed, like the telephone bill, for example, or the electric bill. Okay, that's the um, overview of break-even analysis. Remember the chart that's on the screen at the moment. And uh, thank you for watching.